How about I go? How about I go there? How about I go there? How about I go where? How about I go here? How about I go here? How about now? How about I go? Quiet title versus quit claim deed, and this is part one. Welcome back. I'm Ted Thomas, and for the past 30 years, I've been involved in tax defaulted real estate and tax lien certificate. It's a business and it's a subset of the traditional real estate. So today's episode is going to be a discussion on quit claim deed as compared with a quiet title report or action. And there's quite a bit of difference as you're going to see as we go through this short video. To start with, I'm Ted Thomas. I'm not an attorney at law and I'm not giving legal advice or legal opinions. So you do need an attorney if you're going to do quiet title, that's for sure. So this discussion is information. It's not intended to be anything but a discussion and learning experience. So the viewers, the investors, the newcomers, you should consult a qualified. Now, it's important that you have a qualified and experienced attorney when it comes to real estate. Why? because you don't want to have to spend all the time teaching the attorney. You want to make sure they already know this stuff so they can give you, you know, the best advice possible. So real estate, uh, when you're purchasing or you're holding or you're selling, you're going to need an attorney to advise you as you go along. Uh, certainly quiet title and quit claim deeds. There's major differences, which I'll explain, but you need an attorney to give you all the real details. So there's certainly a big difference, as I say. So start with a quiet title is a legal proceeding. That means it's going to be a lawsuit and it's a claim where you're trying to get someone to give up an interest that they have in the property. So let me try to explain that a little bit more in depth as we go through here. So people will have claims against the property. We have to make sure to clear the title that all claims are removed from the title so it has a clear title or a clear chain of title. That's very important if you're going to sell to somebody else. For example, when you're going to use a quit claim, it's just someone giving away their interest. It's just saying, well, I'm quit claiming any interest I have in it. Well, a quiet title is nothing like that. There's no joking around when it comes to a quiet title. It's going to be a lawsuit. It could be a lengthy legal process, take three months, even six months. But basically, it has to be done by a qualified, experienced attorney. And I keep saying qualified and experienced, and I mean that. You don't want to get someone that hasn't done it before. So what you're doing is you're trying to remove someone else's claim in your property. And so you bought a property at the tax defaulted auction. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get her going here. Start me off. Where to be to go? Have like a thousand dollar open it up. You want to make sure all the claims are removed. And this is a bit of a challenge. And that's why you're going to have to go through the lawsuit process to do it. All right. So I'll give you examples as I go along. So I'm in the business of evaluating tax defaulted properties. Why do I do that? Because I want to buy them at at uh, public auctions from the treasurer, and that's done in well over 3,000 counties across the United States. These are d tax defaulted property, and when that happens, when the tax default takes place, it breaks the chain of title because the county is now going to take title to that property because the property owner defaulted, and so now the chain of title is broken. So if you want to pass that property on and sell it to someone else, you're going to have to put that chain of title together. Uh, so that the title company will issue a uh, title insurance and the new buyer is guaranteed of having pure title. All right, so a tax auction take place uh, in, with properties that are generally used and abused. Now, some of them are absolutely junk, so don't buy the junk. But there's other ones that are in very good condition, just need to be cleaned up and painted, could be maybe just touched up and then resold back into the retail market. So it's going to depend upon the expertise of the buyer at the tax defaulted auction. Now, how does this all come about? Well, the legislature manages the state's business. And what the legislature does is they make laws on how the properties get repossessed by the county and whatever. All right. So what basically happens is the county gets their instruction from the legislature. All right. So they're authorized to charge taxes. In other words, they can levy taxes. If people don't pay the taxes, then the county treasurer can push the people off the property. They push them off the property and then the county resells the property. When they resell the property, they don't try to get list price or retail price or market price. They're going to sell the property for very close to the back taxes. All right. So the whole thing is, is stipulated by the state. The state says this is how it's going to be done. And then it's all enforced by the county supervisors 
and they have the treasury go out and confiscate the property. You can buy the property sometimes for 10 and 20 cents on the dollar and no mortgage or deed or trust loan on the property. The treasurer can sell the property for just the back taxes. Now, they're going to start the bidding at the auction at very low price. It could be $100, could be 10 cents on the dollar. That doesn't mean the auction will be completed at that price. The auction price could be considerably higher than that because what's going to happen is a bidding process. Highest bidder will get the property. But it could start out as low as $100 at the auction. So you're buying a property that has to have the a quiet title in order to pass it to someone else. All right, now if you keep the property, you don't have to quiet title it. What am I talking about here? I'm talking about properties that are gonna be sold for 60, 70, and 80% discounts from tax assessed value. The county tax assessor establishes a value. That's the tax assessed value. However, the county treasurer is selling the property. They just want to get rid of the property. So they can start at any price they want. They can start out at 10 cents on the dollar, 20 cents on the dollar, $100, and they're going to sell to the highest bidder. All right, all the county wants to do is collect money to pay all the county's bills. All right, so these properties can be sold 60, 70, 80% below the assessed value. And you're going to buy a property that's free of a mortgage and a deed of trust loan. Now, I don't make those rules. Now, ask yourself this question. If you can buy a slightly used and abused property for 10 or 20 cents on the dollar, and then you can put a sign in the front lawn, or you could use eBay or Craigslist, or you could use the multiple listing service, or Trulia or Zillow, you can do all that sitting at your computer. You can sell that property for 50 or 60 cents on the dollar. Think about what I said. We bought it for 10 cents. Now we're going to sell it for 50 or 60 cents. All that margin belongs to you. If you could do that, how many would you want to do? You'd want to do as many as you could. Well, this is happening in all 3,000 counties. There's 3,000 plus counties across the United States. All right. So the county needs the money. What do they need the money for? They got to pay the school teachers. They got to pay the county employees. They got to pay the police department, fire department, sheriff's department. The county has a lot of bills. So they're just going to get rid of the property and get it back out into the marketplace. When you buy the property, it goes back on the tax roll and they continue to collect taxes on it. So the county just wants it off of their list and onto the tax roll list. So keep that in the back of your mind. Now this business really, really appeals to entrepreneurs. They like this business. Why? Because they can work their own hours. They can work on what they want to do. Now they might work what seems like a lot less, but they can get a lot more done. So if this is the kind of business you're interested in, this is available 365 days of the year. It's, an, it's a part-time business. So you determine what you're going to get out of the business. The amount of hours you work is going to depend on how much money you're going to make. Okay, now it's been my experience that when I started asking other people questions and for guidance that my business got better and better and better. Why did it get better? Because these other people that had business experience, they could pass on their guidance to me and I could write things down and remember them. I didn't want to just go out and make mistakes. So education is going to be very important in this business. So if you're starting out, it's going to seem very intimidating to get started in a business. There's a lot of tough decisions to be made out there. I'm going to say, try to work with successful people. That would mean you'd want to think about having a coach or a mentor or someone to guide you. Now, I'm telling you, if you don't have a mentor or a coach, you're probably missing the boat. You probably should think seriously about that if you want to accelerate your learning and be in the business. Now, right now, I'm just pointing out a few highlights. All the statutes and all the rules are pointed out. You can go to the library and read the statutes for the state. And you can go to the county records and read all the statutes and rules for the county. So this business has been around for well over 200 years and everything is well defined. So let's get back to this quiet title and quit claim deed. Okay, let's talk about those quit claim deeds. A quit claim deed simply means that whoever thinks they have a, an interest in the property or you think has an interest in the property can give you a quit claim deed and they can quit claim any claim they have. All right, that's just a simple document. It passes whatever interest they had to you, all right? So that if they didn't have any interest, then you don't get anything. If they do have an interest, you're going to get that. That's a lot different than, than a quiet title is going to be. To quiet title, you're definitely going to have to have an attorney do that, and it's going to be a lawsuit to do it. So you need to ask an attorney a lot of questions about that. All right, now in the practical world that we live in today, we're able to buy properties for 10 and 20 cents on the dollar. 
Now, if there's plenty of room and plenty of margin, you want to do that. If there's no margin, why would you even want to buy? So if you're going to buy it at 10 cents on the dollar and it's only worth 10 cents, you wouldn't do that. But most properties have a high tax assessed value, yet you can buy them for pennies. Yes, you want to be in that business. So the quiet title is something an attorney has to do and it's a step-by-step -step process. Okay, here's a good example of a quiet title action. I purchased a property at auction. I spent a lot of money for the property and I thought I could sell the property back into the marketplace for $350,000 to $400,000. Well, a lot of things happened during the period of time that I owned that. For example, I had invested with the tax collector $140,000. I ultimately sold it for $280,000. However, the real estate market dropped during that period of time. Now, what happened when I bought the property? Well, I got a deed, but the deed was a quit claim deed. That simply meant the condition of the property, there was no guarantee or warranty from the county of the condition of the property. So I had to take care of that. In addition to that, they had no warranty or defects in the title. So I hired an attorney, actually a judge that was retiring, and that judge worked for 13 months to clear that title. Now, 13 months is a long time because I, I fixed up the property and prepared it for sale. But guess what? While I was waiting for the quiet title so I could resell it, I had to keep paying taxes. I had to pay the heating bill. I had to pay the cleaning bill. I had to pay the landscaping. I had to remove the snow. I had to pay security. My point is I need an attorney to do the quiet title action. All right. So I solved the problems. Yes, I made money, but there's no guarantee of your success in this business. The best thing you can do is make sure that you have a coach and make sure that you have an attorney so that you know that you can get a quiet title and you can get it done quickly. Now, I said I made a profit. That's a teeny tiny glimpse of what's happening in this business. Some of the returns are absolutely spectacular. I'll tell you more about those. You see those little white circles? That's how many auctions are taking place within that state in the next 90 days. This calendar updates every single day. I'm here today to show you how to make money. To do that, I'm going to show you briefly that there are thousands of tax defaulted real estate properties across the 3,000 plus counties in the United States. This is quite interesting. You're looking at the Ted Thomas Magic Interactive Map and Auction Calendar. It changes every day. Now, I created the calendar and the map so I would know how many auctions are taking place every day in the United States. Now I can show the little guy how to make money. Most importantly, I created this system so I could have an auction list for each auction 24-7. Folks, in the small counties, there's dozens of tax defaulted property. In the large population counties, there's going to be thousands of these properties. You can take advantage of this because this has been available for 200 years and you can learn how to do it. All right, if you're going to buy a tax defaulted property, you need to make sure that you look at the property because many things could go wrong with the property. It could have had a fire. There could have been a, a windstorm. There could have been a hurricane. It could be next to a pig farm. A lot of things could be wrong. So don't buy a property without looking at it. Secondly, don't buy a property unless you know what your exit strategy is going to be. If you don't know what you're going to sell it for, don't buy it because you'll bid too high. Now, this is video number one of two, uh, two part that's all about quiet title versus quit claim deed. Remember, quit claim means problems that you have to solve. Don't forget, request your free auction list right below me.